Are you the type of person who likes to lay things out on the work surface in front of you and then physically move them around as you're working on them? Or do you prefer the force structure of an outline and you like filling in the details as you work down a list? We all have our own cognitive preferences for the way that we like to work with our notes and ideas. But sometimes the approach can be dictated by the tools that we use without ever stopping to ask the question, why not both? Because with Scrintle, you can not only lay your ideas out on an infinite canvas and create connections between things spatially, but you can also dive into the contents of those cards on your board and even drag bits and pieces of notes together as you develop your ideas into something more tangible. In this video, we're gonna consider both linear and visual thinking as tools for thought that we can deploy tactically. I'm gonna show you how Scrintle can actually give you the best of both worlds. Now, truth be told, I just came across Scrintle when they reached out to me about sponsoring this video, but I have to say I'm very impressed with the tool. Yes, this is a sponsored video, but I wholeheartedly endorse this product. And if you decide to give Scrintle a try for yourself, you can use the URL fpp.link slash Scrintle and use the code MikeSchmitz10 to save 10% on a subscription. The link is in the video description below, but the discount is only good for four weeks after this video launches, so don't wait too long. But before we get too deep into the app itself, I want to take a moment to explain the difference between linear and visual thinking, as that is at the heart of why I think Scrintle is so darn cool. Now, there are two main ways that people think about the information they collect into their personal knowledge management or PKM systems. The first approach is linear thinking, and this is where one thing leads to the next, and then to the next, and then to the next in a specific order. An example of linear thinking is the standard outline format that you might use to write a paper, where you have sections of text that are arranged in a sequential order, kind of like the table of contents in a book. And this is the way that I was taught to develop ideas in school, and honestly, it never really clicked for me. It always felt like a huge mental lift anytime I sat down to start writing this way because it was difficult to see the forest through the trees. And as a result, I didn't like writing, and it wasn't until many years later that I found an alternative that made writing and creating much more approachable for me. Now, that second approach, the one that unlocked my hidden creativity, is visual thinking. And this is where you have the pieces of the things that you're working on laid out in front of you and you can move them around as you play with them and discover new connections between them. Now, the most common version of this approach is a practice called mind mapping, where you lay out all your ideas on a big board and you've got these branches that connect related ideas together. Mind mapping is the thing that when I first stumbled onto it immediately clicked for me because it let me see the big picture. I was able to see connections between different parts of my mind map that weren't obvious in an outline because they weren't visible. Now, neither of these approaches are better than the other. In fact, I would argue that each of these approaches has its place in any creative workflow. You don't have to just pick one. You should use both, although like me, one will probably resonate with you more than the other, and many of the tools for thought that are available to us tend to embrace one of these two approaches. For example, Obsidian is a phenomenal outlining app. There's even an outline core plugin you can use that gives you a table of contents for your note and lets you rearrange sections by dragging the headers in the list in the sidebar. Now on the visual thinking or mind mapping end of the spectrum, I love and use MindNode regularly. Every time I start a new creative project, I start with a mind map in MindNode. I even take my book notes in MindNode and I have a separate video that walks through my whole process for that if you're interested. And honestly, I've been using both Obsidian and MindNode happily for the last couple of years. MindNode was the tool that I used for visual thinking and Obsidian was what I used for connecting and developing those ideas before writing. So when I first came across Scrintle, I wasn't really sure what to make of it. It had elements of a linked note-taking app like Obsidian, but it also had these infinite canvases where you could lay out your notes or your cards and visualize the connections between them. But once I started playing around with it, I realized that there is in fact something magical about a single app that bridges these two separate approaches. Now, many connected note-taking apps today are inspired by the idea of Zettelkasten, Obsidian included. And they have this sort of graph view that shows you the connections between the notes that are in your vault. These graph views tend to look impressive, 
but I actually don't think they're all that helpful because you really can't do anything with the notes that show up here. In fact, I personally never look at the graph view in Obsidian. The only version of this that I actually use is the local graph because that allows me to see the links to and from the active note. But there's not much you can do with this local graph view either. Yes, it shows you the connected notes, but you really can't move these nodes around or create new connections. All you can do is see the connections that exist from the contents of the notes themselves, but you can't actually edit them from this view. And that's where Scrintle comes in. So instead of giving you a static view of your notes and the connections between them, Scrintle lets you manipulate your notes as cards on canvases or boards in a way that lets you develop your ideas spatially. And I really, really like it. Now, at first glance, Scrintle looks a lot like Obsidian Canvas. It gives you an infinite canvas where you can work with your cards, you can group them together, you can add arrows to connect them. But in Obsidian, the connections that you make here between the items in your canvas only exist on the current canvas. So in other words, the arrows that you add in your canvas, you don't actually mean anything. They don't actually connect your notes together. They're not permanent. So it's great when you're brainstorming, but it's not necessarily great if you're working on developing your notes and ideas. The only way to actually link two notes together in Obsidian is to use the double brackets to link the title of the other note to the one that you're working on. And yes, you can transclude notes as well, but it uses the same mechanism. But with Scrintle, the arrows that connect your cards serve as real connections, which means that your boards are more than just a space to do casual brainstorming. You can actually develop your ideas and creative projects right inside Scrintle's infinite canvas. It's kind of like the perfect hybrid of the local graph and the canvas view, where you can still play with your ideas on the backdrop of an infinite canvas, but the changes that you make actually mean something. Let's take a look at how it works. To start using Scrintle, you need to understand two basic concepts. First, notes are cards that you can open and edit the contents of. And second, boards are infinite canvases that contain cards and other media. The first board that you really see when you open Scrintle for the first time is the desk view, which is basically a temporary board where you can dump things, much like a physical desktop. So let's start with this desk view and let's add a card to it by clicking the plus button and then selecting card from the list. You can also create other boards, daily cards, which are kind of like daily notes in Obsidian, freestanding text that doesn't exist inside a card, Kanban style columns, or web links. Let's click the card option to add our first note to Scrintle. Okay, so there's our first card. Now let's add another by using the C keyboard shortcut and pick another spot on the board for this card. So now we've got two cards or notes, let's connect them by dragging an arrow between them. This creates an arrow from our first card to our second, and if we go into the contents of the card itself by double clicking on it, we can see at the bottom of the card, there's now a links section with the name of the second card listed here. So now these cards are linked together, and if we go look at the contents of the second card, we can see here that instead of links, the section is called backlinks, because this card is being linked to while the other card is the one that actually has the link. Now you don't necessarily need to worry about these terms, but they are dependent on the direction of the arrow that connects the cards together. So if we click on the arrow and then we reverse the direction, now the second note contains a section called links and the original note has the backlinks section. You can also add links in the contents of the cards themselves. So let's create a third card here Double click on it and edit the contents and add some text. Now when we create a new line, we can click on the plus button and add additional elements to the card. Let's select the add cardboard or link option and just start typing the title of the card that we want to link to. Hit enter to create the link. And if we scroll to the bottom of the card, we can see the card shows up in the links section. If we close the card, we can see there's now a directional arrow that has been added from our third card here connecting it to our first card. Now, once these cards exist on a board like our desk view here, we can rearrange them and we can put them where we want them. And this is helpful when we're trying to develop our ideas by thinking visually with them. 
And if we want to make any changes to the notes themselves, we just double click on the card and add the text that we want. You can also add boards by clicking the plus button and then selecting the board option or hitting the B key. So let's add a new board up here in the upper right of our desk view. Now once the board is added, we can double click on it to open it. So now we've got a new blank board to work with, but first let's rename it by double clicking on the title at the top of our Scrintle window. Now, by the way, Scrintle is a web app, but I'm using the standalone Mac app. I like the native app feel better, but being able to access your Scrintle boards via the web from anywhere is a very handy feature. All right, so now let's start adding stuff to this board and let's add some columns. Let's create a basic Kanban board here. So we'll call this first column backlog, create another column to the right and call it in progress. And a third column to the right of that and call it done. So now we have a basic Kanban board inside of our demo board that we can use to keep track of our creative projects. Now we can just create a card for a project like this Scrintle video by clicking the button in the column and we can add a bulleted list or the steps required to complete this project in the contents of the card itself. We can also add tags by using the pound sign and those tags get added to the card and are searchable via the sidebar in Scrintle. So that's the basics of how cards and boards work, but let's go back to the desk view for just a moment because there's an important distinction to be made here. Now, I really like the term desk view because it implies a work surface that you can put things on, but just like a physical desktop, you will occasionally need to clean things up. So the desk view in particular is kind of like a temporary workspace for things. So as you add things to it, it will likely start to look a little cluttered like you see right here. So the first thing we can do is right click on the desk view and select organize to have Scrintle automatically clean things up a bit. Now this zooms us out, but we can always adjust the zoom by clicking these buttons here in the lower left of the board view but we can also clean up the desk completely by selecting the clear desk option. This removes everything from your desk, but don't worry, we still have all that stuff because cards exist independently of the boards that they appear on. In fact, you can see all the cards in your Scrintle library by clicking on the cards button in the sidebar, which shows a list of all your cards, the date they were created, and the date that they were last modified. All these cards exist here in the archive, regardless of whether they exist on a board somewhere or not. Which leads me to another very important feature in Scrintle as cards can be linked across multiple boards. Now for a long time, I've wanted the ability to link notes in Obsidian across multiple vaults. My workaround with this is to have a single vault for everything with over 50,000 notes in it, just so I can link to anything from anything. So I really like how Scrintle allows you to connect things across these different boards. You can also import cards into Scrintle from your current Markdown notes by clicking the three dots in the upper right and selecting import cards. Just select the folder of the Markdown files that you want to import into Scrintle, click the button and they start being added to your library as they get uploaded to the Scrintle servers. Now, once the import is complete, you'll get a notification like this inside a Scrintle with the number of cards that were successfully imported. But what's really cool about this import though, is that all of the links and the backlinks from the other apps are preserved. So for the import that I just made of my notes from Obsidian, you can see that if I click on a card to view the note, I can see the links and the backlinks added automatically at the bottom of the card. So you don't have to worry about losing your connections when you import your notes into Scrintle. It's kind of crazy to think about. So that's a look at Scrintle and there's a lot to like about it. But that being said, there are a couple of things that I wish were better. First, I wish it had better template support. I rely heavily on templates when creating notes in Obsidian and I have a whole separate video on how I use them. And Scrintle technically has templates, but they're basically board templates. They're not card templates. So if you want to create a new board from a template for something like brainstorming a new project, you can do that by going to the settings, clicking on templates, and selecting the option to create a board with a bunch of pre-made elements. But there's no way to add content to the card itself using a template like I do so often in Obsidian. Now, my first thought to get around this limitation was to use something like Text Expander for my templates, but unfortunately, 
Text expansion doesn't automatically render Markdown when added to Scrintle, and it appears as plain text instead. The other thing I wish Scrintle had is an iOS app. I love working with my mind maps on my iPad mini with my Apple Pencil, and I would love to do the same thing in Scrintle. But without a true mobile app, the experience isn't great, I'm afraid. There's also one very minor annoyance that I ran into where occasionally I would try to delete cards and they would keep coming back into the archive. I discovered the way to fix this is to go to the settings and to select the clear local cache command, but it's still annoying when it happens and it disrupts my flow. Despite a few shortcomings, I really like Scrintle. I wasn't sure I had a place for it in my workflow when I first downloaded it, but honestly, I love how Scrintle bridges the gap between linear and visual thinking. In the future, I still see myself starting my creator process in a mind map, but Scrintle is the perfect place to develop those big ideas further. So for example, here's what my mind map might look like for a project like this video at the beginning. But once I get it to this point, I actually think it makes more sense to move things over to Scrintle because I can not only link the cards for the appropriate sections to an outline card like this, but I can also expand any of the cards for the sections while I continue to develop the content by clicking the button to maximize the contents of the card when I'm writing. And the ability to connect cards across multiple boards is really powerful. It lets you make connections across multiple domains and use source material in multiple projects. So I probably won't use Scrintle for smaller writing projects, but I do see this being the perfect place for developing larger projects like video course content or cohort outlines. Overall, I am really impressed with Scrintle and it has definitely earned a spot in my creative workflow. If you want to try it out for yourself, it's five US dollars per month billed annually or 60 US dollars per year. But remember, you can use the URL fbp.link slash Scrintle and code Mike Schmitz 10 to save 10% if you decide to sign up for a subscription for yourself. Also, if you like this video and you want practical PKM tips delivered straight to your inbox every week, then you should sign up for my free email newsletter at obsidianuniversity.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.